Right, well, it's uh, bang on 10 o'clock and we've got a few people attending, so I'm going to start now with my little introduction. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And thank you very much to Peter for joining us as a um, resident expert in NAVs. New appointments and variations. I prefer to say NAVs because it's not too much of a tongue twister. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for your time, Peter, and everybody else. Um, my name is Gemma Brooks. I'm a customer relationship manager at SafeMove. And SafeMove provide solicitors and conveyances with property searches, our main search being the CON 29DW drainage and water search, which amongst other things confirms whether a property is connected to a public sewer or a public water main. So before I pass over to Peter, I've got a couple of housekeeping points. Please keep your cameras and mics turned off. I think they are automatically turned off anyway. Um, we'll just leave those off until the end of the session. Um, this session is being recorded, so you will receive a copy of the recording um, later on this week. And we'll also have a feedback form that Jamie's is going to pop in the Q&A section. Um, so please do complete this because all feedback is really important to safe move as your opinion matters. Um, finally, if you do have any questions throughout, please do pop them in the Q&A section within Teams and we'll review those at the end of the session. We've got plenty of time afterwards and hopefully we'll be able to provide you with some answers to your questions if you've got any. Um, that is everything from me. So over to you, Peter. Thank you very much. OK, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll just start off by sharing my screen. Um, so, uh, good morning. Um, so, I'm uh, Peter Glatty. Um, I've got um, 27 years experience within the water industry. I'm currently working with uh, ESP as the uh, network engineer. Uh, prior to that, um, I was uh, working with Yorkshire Water for 20 years. Um, and I would like to say, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for um, um, Safe Move for allowing me to come along and uh, present, uh, giving the presentation, uh, basically. So, um, the webinar all about uh, mastering new appointments and, varia and variations, and obviously it's a summary uh, for convincing. Just wanted to start off by saying I'll, I've split the presentation into uh, four parts. Um, though, so the first part is going to be a, bit, a little bit about NAVs. Second is specifically ESP, the company that I uh, work in. Uh, then we move on to uh, drainage and water searches, and lastly, the sort of the, the, the challenges uh, that now can actually pose. So uh, back in 2004, the new Water Act uh, was uh, enacted, and basically, uh, government wouldn't, government was looking to uh, inject competition. Uh, into the market, encourage efficiency, improve customer services, uh, new technologies, and give uh, developers a bit more of a choice. Basically, it was similar to what was done in the gas and um, uh, electric uh, industry uh, a few years ago. When we sp uh, talk about NAVs, um, in old terms, when the uh, legislation was first uh, introduced, it was actually called inset appointments. So inset appointments and NAVs are the same sort of thing. But a NAV, technically what it is, it's a company replacing the incumbent water company as an appointee for a water and wastewater network, operating the last mile uh, of the network within the development site. A NAV, is basically uh, a statutory uh, undertaker, be it sewage or water, and it has all the rights, uh, duties and powers uh, um, uh, that accompanies the uh, undertaking, basically. A NAV has to be appointed uh, to a specific site, and it's on a site-by-site -site basis, uh, and the application has to be to off what, with who then actually uh, approves it. Householder uh, must receive comparable or enhanced services. What, so what we're basically talking about there is, is basically that the homeowner at the end of the day is no worse off. So it has to be the same service that they would actually get off a, a normal incumbent or an improved one. A NAV can actually look after the water or wastewater or it can actually only do one. So it may be that um, ASP look after water and another water company say Yorkshire Water would look after the sewerage.
Why use an ALF? Uh, like we've already said with regards to government injecting uh, competition into the market, uh, it basically gives choice. Um, obviously, uh, NAVs generally are multi-utilities. Uh, so basically, that would be one undertaker for the site looking after gas, electric, water and sewerage. And the idea is that uh, it builds in flexibility and, an inv and innovation um, with regards to um, the design, the process of adoption uh, and looking to see if we can actually streamline it and improve it. But mainly what it all comes down to uh, for developers is there is a, a final financial cost benefit. So in the bottom of the screen there, you can see the three little um, uh, squares, basically. So historically, um, adoptions on the water side of things, you had an asset value payment or an income offset, which was actually provided to uh, the developer. Uh, disadvantage is that they would also have to pay full infrastructure charge. Um, looking at uh, incumbent adoption currently um there is no asset value payments to the developer but there is a benefit with regards to uh, infrastructure charges and environmental incentives so for instance if surface water is not actually put back into the public sewer you get a reduction on the infrastructure charge uh, however adoption by nows there is a bit more advantage on that because basically we we also provide an asset value payment and uh, it follows through that the infrastructure charge can be uh, uh, discounted the same as if uh, the incumbent was uh, adopting it. Now, I probably should have mentioned what an asset value payment is. It's basically we are actually paying for the asset. So we would actually give a financial contribution to a developer to actually um, um, pay for the network. So we are actually buying off them uh, effectively. It's worth noting though that um, the, the choice for an AV is actually down to the developer. The developer can actually choose to go with the incumbent water authority or it actually can come to the NAV. The homeowner doesn't actually have the choice of that. It's basically uh, they have to go with what the ever, ever the developer decides. Our regulators, it's exactly the same uh, as a water company, as the incumbent water companies. We've got Offwat, we've got the Environment Agency, DEFRA, DWI, and obviously the uh, CCW as well. So simply put, a NAV is just another water company um, that operates in anywhere in England and Wales with the same statutory uh, powers and duties imposed on us uh, for our customers. Uh, it's worth noting as well, it is only in England and Wales. Scotland's got different uh, uh, legislation and uh, the ability for an AV to operate in Scotland uh, is not possible basically because of the legislation. So again, just to recap, uh, an AV is just another water company within the incumbents area basically. Um, so I'm just going to move on to give you a little bit information about uh, ESP. So this is basically the market and plug for ESP. So ESP started uh, back in 2000, uh, specifically adoption of gas networks. In 2008, uh, electricity was actually added to that. Uh, currently, we're sitting with over a million customers. We're specialists in residential, industry and commercial. Um, similarly to other water companies, we're, 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 we're backed by uh, pension firms, really. Uh, so uh, ESP is uh, owned effectively by uh, the, the Dutch and Danish uh, national pension funds. We, look, we, we moved into water uh, back in uh, 2001. Um, so obviously we're adoption, ad offering adoption services for water and uh, sewerage. And in 2021, we were appointed to our first site. Uh, and basically, we're currently sitting with around about 75,000 connections awarded. Not all of those are actually connected to the network yet. Some of the um, uh, sites that we have have got long uh, life expectancy where they're building out uh, over the next 10 years or so. Uh, and we would like to think that we provide uh, value added solutions to our customers. Um, so, 
Uh, we operate within uh, England and Wales, uh, and this is just sort of a spatial distribution uh, of some of our sites. So as far north as uh, Sunderland and as far south as uh, St. Austell in Cornwall. Um, just to point out some of the sites there, obviously the big red uh, circles are where the, our sites are uh, more than 3,000 plots. Uh, so we've got um, uh, Trafford Waters in Manchester, we've got Milton Keynes East, and we've also got uh, Hampton Fields in Aylesbury, uh, and these are uh, big development sites basically. Uh, and these are the pretty bug shots of the uh, ESP water team. Uh, and basically, most of us are actually ex-incumbent uh, uh, water authorities. Uh, so Yorkshire Water, Anglian Water, Seven Trent, Southern Water. Uh, and some of you may have actually recognised the mugshots of uh, Mike Connell, Kev and myself, who were previously at uh, Yorkshire Water. Uh, it's worth noting that ESP is not the only uh, nav out there. Uh, you may have actually come across IWNL, ICOSA, LEAP uh, and Albion Water. Now, so we're moving on to um, the drainage and water searches uh, uh, now. So I'm assuming everybody knows what the searches of conveyance and are is for, so I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on that. I also wanted to mention the uh, drainage and water search net network. So the DWSN is an industry body for those who are responsible for providing full and complete responses to CON 29 drainage and water searches for residential and commercial. Promotes good practice in special, uh, specialist area uh, and provides a forum for stakeholders to engage. CON 29 is a product name uh, licensed under the DWSN. Uh, ESP is currently not a member of the uh, DWSN, so we don't badge our research report as CON29 because we cannot, uh, uh, basically, because we're not a, um, a, a member of DWSN, we can't actually badge it up yet. Uh, however, we are working uh, towards becoming a member. So I think for the purposes of the presentation, uh, if I mention CON29, uh, which, like I said, ESP uh, doesn't actually provide. We provide drainage and water searches. But for the purposes of the uh, presentation, if I say CON29, I mean the drainage and water search. Um, so ESP, we do provide uh, searches to uh, customers who actually uh, apply for them. Uh, and on the screen, you can see a little bit of a, a screen grab uh, in blue and what's on our website. Uh, and that's sort of a, a, also a screen grab of the drainage and water search front page that we we provide. Um, we use the same format as a CON29. Um, it, it's basically we're a water company, so we're actually matching what uh, uh, questions and actually answers are provided by uh, a normal uh, water company. Uh, we aim to respond within 14 days. Uh, we currently don't charge uh, uh, for our uh, uh, searches, but this will be changing in the future once we've actually uh, formalised a bit more of uh, our in internal processes. So essentially, uh, I would like to think there's no difference between a CON29 and uh, an ASP drainage and water search. Um, so this is just a little bit more uh, about the challenges um, that uh, can come up. So basically, we want to see uh, how we want to consider how ESP uh, responses differ from that uh, of a traditional water company. Uh, we're going to look at what the challenges are as well. But to take some time to look at some uh, specific questions, uh, I'm not going to go through all the questions within uh, the CON29, uh, basically. So I'm just going to pull out uh, one or two uh, and explain what the differences are for uh, uh, the, the NAV report that you would actually get from, from us. So straight away, uh, question 1.2 or 1.1 uh, uh, is basically the extract uh, of the water and sewage record. Uh, when we provide this, it will simply be uh, the ESP network. It won't be any uh, any other network. Um, we're required to hold a record of a uh, we're required to hold a record of a record of our network, uh, which we actually provide to customers as part of the search. 
We're going to have a little uh, a close look at um, uh, questions 2.5, 2.51, and I think it's 2.52. It's basically how close um, is the property to the existing public sewer network. Obviously, we provide uh, the information uh, in the report um, with the record showing how close uh, it actually is. Um, but there is some differences from um, uh, what you were could see if uh, the incumbent was actually providing it to you. So screenshot here uh, is basically uh, an example. So if you can see where the uh, pink cross is, that's the uh, property under search. The green line is the uh, nav boundary. So we have actually the, the water company within the uh, site itself, but we're not uh, the water company external to it. Basically, um, the um, as usual, the, the blue dash line is surface water and the dot dash brown line is uh, foul water network. Um, so on this search, we get actually asked, uh, is the public sewer network uh, within 30 metres um, of uh, the property? Now, currently, uh, the blue and brown line uh, are the Section 104 sewers, the adoptable sewers are not fully public yet. So the answer to this would be that um, the property is not within uh, uh, 30 metres of the public sewer network, but would actually caveat that uh, once the network is adopted, the, the property will be uh, within 30 metres of the sewer network. Uh, however, uh, the properties to adja adjacent um, to, the, to the pink cross, uh, for instance, uh, number two on the surgery, um, potentially there is a public sewer running around the back of that, and, and basically it's not shown on our records because it's not an ESP uh, public sewer. It is basically uh, the incumbent water company sewer. So we kind of comment on that. We're not sure if it's exactly there. We don't have the record for that. Um, so that's where um, potential um, issues or problems uh, arise within the search report. However, this is not a new thing, uh, uh, basically. So. When we look at um, incumbent water companies' uh, statutory boundaries, uh, obviously the water uh, and sewage don't always match. Uh, so for in the Yorkshire region, um, the, the sewage network, if you look going uh, across the Pennines, it stops around about uh, prior to settle. Uh, however, the uh, water network goes way over actually into Lancashire. Uh, and if we think about the uh, southern area, um, Part of Doncaster will be supplied by water, um, but the sewage will be provided by Seven Trent. So this example here uh, is very similar to what you could actually have in uh, Bolsover, uh, which is basically in the south of the uh, Yorkshire uh, network area. So part most of Bolsover, uh, the sewer network is actually uh, Yorkshire Waters network. However, there is a very small portion of it in the south uh, east of Bolsover, which is in Seven Trent. So if you get a sewer record from Yorkshire Water, it doesn't show any uh, sewer network in the southeast of uh, Bolsover. However, if you get it from uh, Seven Trent, you have a very small area uh, served by uh, Seven Trent, uh, but the majority of Bolsover is not. And those Seven Trent sewers actually discharge into uh, the Yorkshire Water network, uh, basically. So. This is um, uh, an issue uh, because of the question, is it within um, 30 metres of the public sewer within that sewage undertaking? Basically, the, the, the answer is right, but it also doesn't actually include uh, the public sewer network in other authorities or other, other undertakers. Uh, obviously, um, with the advent of NAV sites coming along, this issue may actually raise its heads more often. Uh, and obviously, um, DWSN uh, and myself are actually looking into this to see how uh, it can be the the Con 29 can actually be improved and how we can actually mitigate this issue. Other questions to uh, uh, consider: ESP, ESP what public sewer network uh, indicate NESP public sewers and disposal means lateral drains within the property of the site. Now, again, most of the time on new development sites, there should not be uh, any network within the cartilage of the development. Uh, and we would actually respond very similar 
to uh, an incumbent water company like Yorkshire Water, uh, for, for instance. Um, 2.6, any sewage lateral drain serving or which are proposed to serve the property subject to an ex existing adoption agreement. So basically, again, this is um, uh, going to be very, very similar to the incumbent water authorities. So when a developer come to it, comes to us uh, to be the undertaker for water and sewage on a site, inevitably that we're going to enter into sewer adoption agreements and water main uh, uh, adoption agreements. 2.7 is all about build overs. Uh, unlike the uh, um, incumbent water companies, uh, we get consulted under Part H4 uh, by building uh, uh, by building control, basically, and we would actually uh, respond accordingly. Again, these are new sites, and generally you shouldn't see uh, any building over of sewers. Most of the time, the network with in the curtilage of the development is not public anyway, so it shouldn't really cause uh, an issue. A little bit more uh, on the questions. Uh, obviously, uh, we get uh, asked if the uh, property is at risk from uh, internal flooding. And like any other uh, incumbent water authority, we actually uh, hold a record of uh, properties at risk from flooding from the public so when at work. It's nice to say ESP currently does, does not have any of our properties on that risk register. Um, where we cannot provide um, um, the right information would be 2.9. So it basically where's the nearest treatment works, uh, sewage treatment works. While we can actually provide uh, the information on which treatment works it is, we don't know exactly how close it is, uh, unfortunately. So we can't actually provide a full and complete answer um, to that one. Um, similarly, on the water side of things, you've got 3.4, which is basically uh, their low pressure. Um, most of the properties um, uh, on new developments shouldn't be at risk of low pressures or the ESPs where it shouldn't be. Basically, uh, during the design of the uh, water main adoption, um, pressure uh, is actually uh, readily uh, uh, looked into and it's, uh, the design is uh, sufficient enough that low water pressure shouldn't be. However, it is worth um, uh, noting that we get uh, our water from the incumbent. So provided that the pressure is consistent and uh, is provided at the agreed rate to the site boundary, there won't be any uh, risks of uh, risk of uh, low pressure. And again, none of our properties are at the, um, on the risk reg register for low pressure. Water classification, so this is the uh, water hardness. Is it soft, is it very hard? Uh, and provide because we get our water from the incumbent, it's basically going to be the exact same answer. So if you actually ask the offshore water for uh, a water quality uh, of a certain property, ours would match it exactly the same because obviously our water's coming from the offshore water. Uh, it's also worth noting that um, uh, the, the billing questions, um, again, because we're the NAV, we, uh, it, it is ESP who would actually provide in the bill. Similarly, if it was Yorkshire Water, it would be Yorkshire Water providing the bill. Apologies, I think I've just had an IT issue. Back. Yes, so like I said, uh, water quality. Um, moving on. Obviously, we do provide commercial searches as well. Um, uh, they're very similar to the residential uh, searches, but there's uh, a few extra questions in there. So basically, um, is the property um, discharging any trade effluent? under section 118 of the Water Industry Act. Again, if it's a commercial search and if the customer has actually applied for a license for trade effluent, we'll explain that uh, in the report. Um, and also if there's any wear leave or uh, easement uh, agreements across the uh, search property, we would provide details of that, just like any other uh, water company, basically. Just got a tip for you, uh, basically. Um, so if you're actually trying to find out if your property, uh, if, if you're trying to find out who the water and sewage undertaker 
uh, is for your property. You can actually go on to the uh, Water UK website and there's a uh, section there uh, about uh, you put the postcode in and it'll actually tell you who's the water uh, and sewage undertaker. You can actually Google who's my water company and the first uh, um, line search that comes up is the Water UK website and it'll take you directly there. So I'll give you an example. So we ESP has got a site um, in um, Penston on Halifax Road. Uh, one of the properties is the S36 uh, postcode I've got there. And the um, result that you actually get from the website is uh, ESP are actually um, um, the water undertaker for the site, but Yorkshire Water is still the uh, sewage undertaker for the site. So it's a bit strange. Um, while ESP provides water, we don't provide sewage. Yorkshire Water still does that. And that's basically because um, the customer, the developer, requested us to adopt the water only. And uh, the sewage was actually still left with Yorkshire Water, basically. So this has been a very sort of uh, whistle stop uh, uh, tour to NAVs. So just to again do a final recap, um, a, a NAV is nothing to be scared about. It, we're just another water company working in the sort of the larger incumbent water uh, authority. Um, we provide the CON 29 uh, searches similar to um, uh, the incumbent. We were all looking to um, uh, become a member of the DWSN. Uh, we're not there yet. We've got some internal processes that we want to sort out before we apply. Um, but that's it, everyone. Thank you very much, Peter. Fantastic, very informative. We've got a couple of questions from Craig. So thank you, Craig, for your three questions. Great questions, actually. Um, so first question, are NAVs regulated by off what and do they have any regulatory measures or targets? For example, um, WQ, DG2, CSL leakage, et cetera. Uh, yes. So our, regulator, our regulators are exactly like uh, Yorkshire Waters or the incumbents. It's easy for you to see Yorkshire Water. Yeah, so our <laughs> regulators are exactly like uh, uh, Yorkshire Water and we do have uh, the, the similar targets that we have to actually meet. Uh, obviously, um, some of uh, our reporting structure and things are not like um, um, big water companies because we're actually small in, compare, in comparison to, to Yorkshire Water. So what I'm talking about here is the annual reporting about the level of information that we have to provide. It's not as actually uh, uh, big as, say, Yorkshire Water actually has to do, but uh, leakage targets and all the rest of them are exactly the same. Lovely. Great. Thank you very much. Question two is, are there any timescales, stroke dur duration that a NAV must manage or serve its customers and asset base? If there is a timescale duration and the NAV discontinues, does the area incumbent water supplier have to take on these assets? Great question. Right. So under our license, uh, we do in perpetuity unless we break the rules and whatever and off what can actually step in like any other water company. And I'm thinking Thames here and actually revoke the license. Uh, however, if the, um, uh, the NAV company um, goes bust, goes pop, uh, yes, it does fall on the incumbent to serve uh, the, the, the customers. That is the ball fallback position. What I would actually say part of the uh, off what application uh, it is very robust off what to see a lot of financial information uh, from the NAV companies to ensure that we can actually serve the site uh, uh, correctly and that um, the homeowner is not put in any worse off than uh, with the existing uh, existing incumbent. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, third question from Craig, and we've got a few more that have come through as well, Peter. Um, touching on question 3.4, if the pressure at point of connection stroke boundary to the NAV above minimum levels of service is, sorry, is above minimum levels of service, however, the development has properties at higher elevations, I am assuming NAVs would have to install booster pumps to maintain levels of service. Very technical question. It may be. It may be that uh, we have to um, uh, do that, or it could also be the incumbent would actually do a booster station outside the nav site. Okay. But okay. during the design, we have to ensure as part of the adoption process that we've got adequate pressure. 
Yeah, OK, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, question from Gareth. Gareth, are the new NAV records automatically sent to the incumbent water companies? Uh, no, not at the moment. Um, so uh, there's no duty to do that. Uh, however, we do prov generally provide uh, our records to uh, the NAVs, uh, sorry, to incumbents when they actually ask for it, uh, basically. Uh, and we would like to think it's a reciprocal agreement. Uh, where we would actually get uh, information provided of the network around our site. Uh, but this is an ongoing discussion. Lovely. And that's all of the questions. I think unless anybody's got any more questions, um, please do. In the chat, Gemma, there's yep. there's, there's a few questions. I don't know if you can access the chat. All right. OK, sorry. I thought that was locked down. <laughs> yes, uh, there's a few questions in the chat and there's one from quite a lengthy one from Phil Ward. So it might be better if, if I turn your mic on, Phil. But if you want to address the the ones that you can get to, let, let me know when yeah, you get to sure. Phil's. Yeah, OK, right. We'll start with Robert then. Why is it in emergencies that YW have been asked to go and repair mains on NAV sites? Do NAVs not have their own team to repair mains and services? Right, we do. But we've also, uh, depending on which incumbent we're talking about, uh, we do have um, uh, a, a contractual arrangement that we pay for uh, where the, uh, the incumbent would actually go out on our behalf. So I do believe we have got one of those agreements with Yorkshire Water and it's a service that we pay for. OK, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, we'll just jump up to Jeremy's question. There are a number of NAV sites within Yorkshire Water where the sites contain YW operational sewer network. Is there a disclaimer when providing sewerage services to request plans from both the NAV operator and the larger water company it sits within? Sorry, could you repeat that, please, Jim? Of course, yeah. Uh, there are a number of NAV sites within Yorkshire Water where the sites contain Yorkshire Water operational sewer networks. Is there a disclaimer when providing sewerage services to request plans from both the NAV, NAV operator and the larger water company it sits within? I don't quite understand the question, really. So obviously the... Um, the information that we provide uh, our customers, obviously it has the uh, standard disclaimer like uh, the Yorkshire Water uh, maps would uh, do, saying this is a, uh, what public sewer is um, that, that we maintain. The copy of the record is our public sewer uh, network. Um, there may be other uh, um, pipes within the, the site that are not actually uh, our responsibility. Um, I'm not sure if you yeah, if sorry. We, I think I might have said services instead of searches, so I've confused it a bit more. Is there a disclaimer when providing sewage searches to request plans from both the NAV operator and the larger water companies it sits within? Does that make ah, right. more so, sense? Uh, sorry. Oh, oh, do we, do we, uh, so obviously we provide information on our network. We actually state that uh, in our um, um, search uh, uh, report. Uh, I guess we don't necessarily say that you should also speak to the incumbent water authority as well, if if, if that's what the question's posed. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Hopefully that covers off. Um, sorry for any confusion there. We have got a long question from Phil S. Ward, but I'm guessing it probably might be best for us to contact him afterwards um, to discuss. It's quite a lengthy question, if that's OK with you, Peter, if you've got time. Um, yeah, to have a conversation with Phil. Um, he can't, yeah, he can't yeah. speak at the moment. So it's probably best that we just, um, yeah, we've got some further comments from Jeremy as well regarding some of the questions as well. But we can certainly look at those after the webinar um, and then get in touch with those that we've not covered off any um, questions. Because I think Phil's question is quite a popular question. So if anybody does want the answers to the question that Phil has asked, please do contact me and we'll make sure that we'll give you a full response to that um, after the presentation. Um, but I think we're all done and dusted for questions. No, we're not. There's another one that's come through. I can speak on Phil's behalf. Oh, brilliant. Great. Craig Needham. Can All we, right. um, can we yeah, let me Craig's just, uh, mic, please, let me Jamie? Just Thank you. Up, uh, Craig's mic as well. I think there's a... Craig's going to a... speak on behalf of Phil. Yeah. There's quite a few people interested in Phil's question by the look of things. Right, there you go, Craig. He should be. He says he should be able to speak now. You might have to unmute yourself, but give it a yes, go. Yes, I do. Yeah, I've just been speaking to myself there, schoolboy error. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Phil's unable to speak today. He, he suffers with MND, so sometimes he's, he's unable to. But 
I have done a lot of work with Phil uh, over the last few months, so I do understand some of these questions he's asking. So okay, great. in regards to obviously the first one, um, it, it's kind of the same kind of question I asked in regards to the same obligations. Um, you know, they do not have the same regulations and take. So I think what Phil's asking is, is it a level playing field? Um, and based on that question, um, we do know that there are other NAVs out there. Um, we've dealt with NAVs, obviously, within Yorkshire Water. And some of these NAVs have got more customers than, than say, Portsmouth Water or Bristol Water, who are heavily regulated and have, obviously, you know, regulatory targets. So it doesn't, you know, I think Phil's point here is it doesn't feel like a level playing field. Well, all I can add to that is obviously uh, off what classifies uh, uh, NAVs as small water companies. Uh, and I guess until it is what it is until off what um, uh, deem uh, differently, I guess. Right, OK, um, I'll go into the second question. So. So he's got here, yeah, yeah. So the no the no detriment clause obviously does not include DG free or leakage, having observed the internal networks of NAVs. So I think this is around obviously the uh the quality or the workmanship on on some of the sites. Um again, you know, what kind of testing's carried out on NAV sites when new mains are laid? Are the, are the pressure tested certificates, what quality certificates, that kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, basically um, our uh, water uh, manager is Mike Connell, who's previously from uh, uh, Yorkshire Water, and he follows the very, uh, a very similar process to what he used to do with uh, uh, Yorkshire Water. Our yep. water quality uh, specialist was from Seven Trent, uh, uh, Amaraj. He's very good, uh, and he's on the ball with regards to that. Right, OK. Um, the third one, um, yeah, I think it's a good question. So obviously there's, you know, there's there's been discussions mentioned about um, nav records, um, you know, not being available to the public domain, shall we say, um, in some instances. Obviously, within those sites, there will be fire hydrants, etc., which the fire services or emergency services will not have any uh, records of. Um, so, you know, how does that affect the customer's health and safety within the nav? And and also, you know, if um, say, for example, Yorkshire Water, if there's an emergency service agreement in place um, where, you know, you've got customers experiencing no water leak or something like that. I know there are emergency service agreements in place with some NAVs. Uh, again, you know, we've got no records of the asset base. It's, it's, an, it's an health and safety hazard risk to our staff yeah. as well on that front. So I think it's kind of like a two prong question, one around obviously no um no records for firefighting or the firefighting services and then secondly kind of the emergency services agreement in place with water companies we do have a record uh it's not as wonderful as odyssey uh in yorkshire water that's for sure uh and we're pushing pushing for a better gis than we already actually have uh, but we do have a record and we can actually provide it uh, to customers if requested Specifically with Yorkshire Water, uh, there's no issue with uh, us providing that information to you, um, uh, uh, providing the uh, DWD drawings to you, uh, Craig. And what I would actually suggest is that we uh, touch base after this, have a quick meeting and set up something where we can actually provide that information to you uh, readily. All right, OK. Yeah, I think that because obviously the, there's mm. other things as well, isn't around, you know, if, if there was a major, I don't know, leak burst on, on, on a NAV site, it could potentially be depressurizing our system, impacting our customers. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, we, we need to be able to do something so far, like the health and safety of of our customers and, you know, potential ingress, you know. Most uh, definitely. Uh, you uh, know, th there'd need to be some operation on that network. I think mm -hmm. if it's valving on your site out of hours, is someone available 24 seven to provide that information? Yes. And yeah. is that the so, same for the firefighting uh, services? It will be, yes. So we've got operational engineers who are actually uh, on, on call 24-7. Um, I, I definitely th agree this is uh, good. And obviously, from, from our point of view, it's recipro reciprocal as well. So if there's an issue on the Yorkshire Water Network, how do we uh, actually find out about it as well? We've had one or two instances re recently where it wasn't provided in a timely manner. Um, so yes, definitely need to uh, work better uh, together on it. Obviously, 
I suppose we are sort of uh, competing when we're actually, when the developer's looking at sites, but I don't really see us as competing when we're actually helping the customer. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and, and Phil's final question here is, uh, and it is one that I've not actually spoken to him about, but it is a, it is a, a good question to be fair. Um, so how do NAVs intend to re uh, recompense the incumbent when we are prevented from pressure reduction for leakage because of NAVs? So I think this is around obviously the uh, pressures at the boundary um, to a NAV site. So for, say for example, I don't know, you've got four or five bar at your boundary, you've got elevated properties, we've got leakage in our area wanting to do some pressure management to reduce mains failures, leakage. Um, obviously, we're unable to maybe do that due to, you know, pressures required at the boundary for a for a NAV. So I think what Phil's asking is how do NAVs intend to recom uh, recompense and and obviously, you know, we've restricted our potential leakage savings. Yeah, again, it's something I'm probably going to have to take offline. I don't know specifically the answer to that question, mm. but uh, welcome sitting down with um, uh, yourself and uh, Phil Craig. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds Fine. like a good way forward. Thank you, Craig, for yeah, those questions. For no worries. Um, I'm sure Peter will be in touch with yourself and Phil after the presentation. Thank you very much. We've just got a couple more questions that have come through um, whilst Craig's been chatting. Just bear with me. It's been going a bit crazy. Um, start with Dennis. Okay, Dennis, is there a reason why W cannot inspect the installation of water mains and fittings in their area, the same as SLPs and requisition, especially if we could end up adopting in the future? Are water regs also carried out and by who? I don't know if that's a question for you, Peter, or really a wider Wait, YW oh, question. Well, obviously, uh, the we're, we're the water undertaker within our site. Uh, so we would actually be undertaking those inspections. We do take water regs inspection. Uh, we do do take, undertake water uh, regs inspections as well on new developments. Um, and it's our duty to do it and we do it. Thank you. Lovely. Next question is from Jane. Would a NAV generally apply for a sewer connection to have the lateral drain adopted or will it remain private? Um, right, so with regards to the Section 106 sewer connection application, it's exactly like uh, uh, what currently happens at Yorkshire Water at the moment with regards to a developer. It's generally the contractor who's making uh, the connection on the developer's heart behalf uh, who would actually make the connection application. Um, obviously, if the connection uh, is outside our boundary, it's got nothing to do with us because we're not the incumbent. Uh, when it comes to uh, adoption, obviously we will do the Section 104 uh, adoption uh, within the NAV site. However, there's a, a clause uh, that states in Section 104, I cannot remember if it's Section 104 8 or 10 or something like that. So the last little bit uh, of sewer, say four or five metres, that's actually outside our boundary. Rather than actually have uh, the developer apply for another section 104 for that short length, section 104, 8 or 10 uh, permits um, ESP to actually ask if we can actually adopt that. But then Yorkshire Water would have to agree to that, that, that short length of ESP adopting within another incumbent uh, area. It happens quite regularly uh, where we would actually ask, do you mind if we just take that three or four metres of pipe that's in your area because it's actually the network that's serving the whole uh, uh, development. Okay, great. Thank you, Peter. Uh, next question from Robert, and I'm not sure whether this would tie in with a meeting with Craig and Phil. Um, just follow up to YW repairing mains on NAV sites. We could really do with these mapping on Odyssey, which is obviously a YW system. Um, otherwise, we're expected to go and repair these with no idea where mains or valves or hydrant size is something that could be looked at. Is that something you could probably cover off with your meeting with Craig? And yeah, Phil? The, the, I, yeah. I, I appreciate this problem, uh, basically. So if we can actually provide your uh, provide the uh, um, the adoptable network information to you guys. You can put it onto a specific overlay on the Odyssey yeah. or even call them up something slightly different on the stat record or whatever. Yeah, great, lovely. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll arrange for that to be discussed after this presentation. Um, next question is from uh, today, Zoe. Uh, can I jump in with some discussions that developer services have have, have had with with NAVs previously? I don't know if Zoe wanted to jump on now or whether she could be included within that meeting after this session. Um, I'll probably just add her to the list, actually. Unless you actually want to speak, Zoe, then you can obviously put your hand up. Um, 
Phil's again added a little bit more detail around the meeting that you're going to have moving forward. Oh, yeah, Zoe does want to speak. <laughs> Can you unmute Zoe, please, Jamie? Hi guys. Great, thanks Zoe. Hi. Hi. Um, I just thought I'd jump in because a lot of the, the questions or points that have been made are things that have kind of come up in some recent conversations. Um, so developer services held a NAV forum of which Pete um, attended along with representatives from IWNL, uh, ICOSA and uh, there's definitely an appetite in the NAV network for them to be working more closely and collaboratively with the water incumbents. So there was a lot of sort of like, yes, we can happily provide sort of like the match plans. So it's not just a hashed out area. Um, so we've definitely got all of these opportunities. And what I'm finding quite positive from the audience and listening to the comments is that there's the appetite across the wider Yorkshire water. So it's not just within the developer services side of it, but also how does that impact sort of like the ongoing network? So can I be included in the sure. calls that are being sort of like set up? Because um, obviously that we specific with ESP, but um, we know that there's an appetite with the, the rest of the developers that we are working with, sorry, NAVs that we are working with in in Yorkshire and I've got uh, Andy on my team who's having sort of regular uh, strategy meetings with um, the, the various different NAVs so happy for, for people to kind of like get involved in those yeah, conversations sure. and build that collaboration that the uh, regulator is definitely trying to drive with the open market. Yeah. I just thought I'd, I'd add that yeah, in there that there is that audience already and there is a, a willingness across NAVs not just what Pete's representing on behalf of ESP today. Yeah that's fine Zoe thank you I've, I've added you to the list of everybody else and also Michael in the chat Michael Lund I've added you as well so either myself or Pete will be in touch after this presentation but thank you for jumping on. Um, OK, a couple more questions. <laughs> we'll keep going. Uh, yeah, just got a bit of um, added context from Phil Ward, so we'll make sure that's included within the meeting, Phil. Thank you. Chris has asked, do NAVs inspect the sewers they are adopting the same as YW inspectors do? Developers are known to connect land drainage into their adoptable networks, which may make its way into the YW network. With storm spills reductions being a massive focus at the minute, this can pose a risk to our network and spill numbers with their inter interconnectivity. Yes, we inspect the uh, sewer networks <clears throat> uh, and basically, um, yeah, it's just a general uh, process, some of the section 104, um, section 104 inspections. Uh, when it comes to uh, the land drainage, um, as Chris knows, it's not, uh, land drainage is simply not mentioned in the Water Industry Act. So when we say it has no right to connection, uh, it's it simply, it's, it's just not mentioned. There's not that there's no right of connection. It's just not mentioned in the Water Industry Act. So, for instance, if there was a, a formal agreement to accept land drainage in the network, uh, it is uh, it can be done that way. Uh, also, uh, it is also land drainage is also permissible if it enters the network via uh, a suds feature. Uh, however, uh, saying that, um, we don't particularly like uh, land drainage in the network. The public sewer network is not there for uh, uh, land drainage. Uh, quite often, uh, drainage uh, designs and the rate of uh, discharge to uh, the public sewer is actually uh, completed under the planning stage. Um, so uh, it's quite often that uh, the land drainage actually falls out at that point. Um, but we can make, uh, as the undertaker, we can decide to accept it into our network, basically. Um, when um, surface water returns to the incumbent's network, Obviously, uh, there is a legal agreement between the NAV and the incumbent, the bulk discharge agreement, and discharge rates are actually um, uh, confirmed within that legal agreement, and we're not allowed to go over and above that discharge rate. 
Lovely, thank you, Peter. And just one final comment from Joy. So thank you, Joy. Um, there's definitely a need for some kind of steering group so that the water companies and the NAV companies can work together. So I'll make sure that Joy is um, included at any meetings that you might have moving forward. Yeah, so sort of nationally, uh, obviously, where the NAVs get invite, uh, invited along to Water UK, which, uh, which is uh, all that. Uh, and I know Zoe, uh, Zoe in uh, developer services is working together uh, with all the NAVs to have these forums anyway. Yeah, OK, great. That's lovely. Oh, and just one last question that's come through from Daniel. Where a NAV connects to a YW sewer and that sewer experiences ops issues due to network abuse identified as coming from the NAV network, who is responsible for investigating in, uh, and identifying the source? If this is the NAV, are they liable to action from YW under Section 111? Uh, well, obviously, section 111, um, putting anything down a uh, sewer that uh, impedes the flow, uh, basically. So whoever is actually doing it is, is actually can be taken to court under section 111. Um, if the um, if the issue is being caused by uh, the NAV site, I would hope that we could work together uh, and actually investigate it. But essentially, if it is on our site, obviously, it's our responsibility to investigate. But I expect that we would cooperate together to actually find the culprit. Mm -hmm. Excellent. OK. And Phil's just mentioned that that would be covered off in a bulk supply agreement anyway. Um, so, yeah, yeah well, the bulk supply is obviously for the water, the bulk discharges for the sewage. So we, we, when we were talking about land drainage, it's, it's drainage. So. Yeah, that's great. Lovely. Peter, that is all of the questions. So I just want to thank everybody for attending the session today. And obviously for, for you coming along, Peter, finding time out of your day to... Uh, provide us with some a little bit more information around NAVs. It's been really useful. Um, obviously, lots of work and meetings to take place moving forward, which will probably be your main focus moving forward. So thank you to everybody. If you would like a copy of the presentation, if you are an internal YW colleague, you can get that direct from Teams. If you're external, then we'll send a copy to you via email. Um, as Jamie's mentioned within the Q&A section, there is a feedback form. So if you could complete that, we would um, appreciate that because all feedback is welcomed by Safe Move. So thank you all for your time. Thank you, Peter, for your time. That is the end of the session. And thank you very much. Hopefully see you all soon.